What's going on? My name is Austin Rutherford and welcome to my channel. The biggest question that I get asked is, Austin, how do I find great deals? How do I find motivated sellers? So in this video, I'm going to give you four lists, four different lists that you can go out and market to, to find motivated sellers. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to give you one huge secret hack that nobody talks about on how you can pull accurate lists. And don't get it twisted. A lot of people think that finding private money lenders is the most important part about real estate. And other people think that finding cash buyers is the most important about part about real estate. But what I can tell you is they are both 100% wrong. The most important thing in real estate is finding amazing deals. If you can find great deals at a discount, the money will always be there. The cash buyers will always be there. You will make more money if you understand the value and importance of being able to find amazing deals. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. So if you can smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, I'd greatly appreciate that. So during my entire real estate career doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals, there's only two properties that I've ever purchased off of the MLS, off of the open market. Every other deal that I've done has been direct to seller. I've got these properties off market from marketing directly to sellers and buying properties directly from motivated sellers. So how do we do that? We have to market to these sellers. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a tool called PropStream. So what PropStream does is it's a data aggregator. So they take in a whole bunch of information about addresses and counties, loan amounts, equity amounts, vacants, bankruptcies, a whole bunch of information. They put it together in one place, which allows you to go in there and pull the most motivated list to then market to those people to get houses at a discount. So PropStream does have a subscription. It is $97 per month, but think of it like this. You know, if you get one deal out of this, one deal, it could pay for your PropStream subscription for literally the next like 10 to 15 years potentially. So $97 a month is a no brainer. There is a seven day free trial to see if it's something that works for you. If you want to get started with that, click the link in the description below to sign up for that seven day free trial, because that is what we're going to be using to talk about today, how to navigate PropStream. So when you log into PropStream, this is a screen that you're going to come to. So you can come in here and you can search by city, you can search by state, you can search by zip code, you can search by any of these things, but you got to find out which market it is that you want to be in. So we're going to start with the zip code. So if you search, you know, let's say 43232, for example, that zip code and all the houses within that zip code is going to come up. So out of the properties in that zip code, there's about 12,000 of them. And here's a few quick breakdowns. We don't use too many of these, but there's 44 listed on the MLS. They claim that there's 40 in pre-foreclosure, two going to auction, 28 bake owned, uh, 1,951 cash buyers, meaning that a cash buyer has purchased a property in that area recently. Um, so there's a whole nother video on what, if you're wholesaling houses, if you find great deals, how to find cash buyers. If you check out this video up here, it'll show you exactly how to find cash buyers. They also talk about liens, vacants, and high equity. So you can come in here and you can navigate this search uh, down even further. So two of the first lists that we're gonna be talking about is a owner occupied high equity list and a non owner occupied high equity list. So what's the difference between these? So the first thing is owner occupied is the property occupied or not, meaning that somebody lives in this house, whoever owns this house lives in the property, which means it's their primary residence, which means that they may not have all the motivation in the world to sell it because they're currently living there. On the other side, a non owner occupied property means that the owner of the property does not live in the property, meaning that they own it, it might be vacant, or they own it and it's currently a rental property, which means that there's different ways for them to be motivated to sell because a rental property can be a headache at times. So you can choose either one of these. Um, the non-owner occupied is a smaller list. So that's maybe a good way to start out because those are potentially more motivated as well. Um, the owner occupied or any, both is a bigger list. So it depends on how big you're trying to go and how much money that you have available to put into marketing. Um, I do any, but if you're just starting, you can do non-owner occupied, which means that they own the property, but they do not live in the property. And then next thing you want to go down here to is uh, we always do residential. So we want residential properties and single family. We, we do do condos. We do do two to four family. We do, we do do five plus units. So that's something you're going to have to ask yourself, but we do all these things. And then as you go through here, you know, bed, bathrooms, it doesn't matter if the deal makes sense, really doesn't matter how many bedrooms are in there. MLS status, I never really use that. Pre foreclosure, don't ever really use that. Ownership info, some people will say, you know, the, the, the seller has to own the property for maybe five years, uh, at least five years. Um, I don't really ever do anything with this. Uh, personally, you can do this. Uh, the things that I really pay attention to, I don't do anything with liens or bankruptcy or divorces, uh, things that I really pay attention to. So there's two ways to look at this, right? Estimated equity or loan to value. So first loan to current value. So this is what I normally use um, when pulling data 
uh, from PropStream. So basically what this means is, is how much do they owe on the property versus how much it's worth? So if it's worth $100,000 and they owe 50,000 on it, they have 50% equity in the deal. It's a 50% loan to value, right? So if you come in here, if somebody doesn't have any equity in their house and they sell it to you, there's no profit for you to, to, to make, right? So you want them to have some equity in the deal uh, for you to be able to potentially make this profitable. So, you know, a lot of people will come in here and search up to maybe, you know, 70% loan to value. So there's at least 30% of equity within the deal. So if you do all those searches, it gives you 1,908 properties in this zip code. In this one zip code, there's 1,908 properties. So you can go by county, you can go by city, so you can go bigger and pull a lot more data. Uh, again, it just depends how much data you actually want. But 1,900 records, that's a great uh, amount uh, to get started with. But the huge thing here that nobody talks about, and I wanna, I wanna make sure you understand, this, this is the hack, this is the, the cheat code, the secret that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. When people use loan to value, or if people use this equity in the deal, it's going based on the auditor's value. So for an example, this property right here, if you go to your county auditor, this, house, this property right here in my, in my area, 392 Amesbury, it's just sold for $208,000 about three weeks ago. So sold for 208 grand. So that's the market value of the property. The thing is, is that the auditor only valued this home at $115,600. So when you're pooling equity and when you're pooling loan to value, it's going based on the auditor's value. So if you ran the same search, 70% of $115,000, it's like 75,000-ish dollars, meaning that they could not owe more than 75 grand on this property because this is the number they use to value the property, although it just sold for 208 grand. So if you're using a 70% loan to value, it's based on the value of what the auditor has. And in most markets around the country, the auditor's value is significantly lower than what the actual value of the property is. So if you're only doing this and you're only going up to 80%, 70%, you could be missing out on a huge opportunity, huge amounts of properties, especially after the run up in values that happened over the last two years. You know, I may even go up to 100% of value. You know, that gives me 2021. I might go to 120% of value. That gives me 2032 because you got to remember, let's say 115,000. Where's my phone? All right, I'm back. So you take $115,000 and you multiply that by 20%. $115,000 times 20% is 23 grand. So if you take 23 grand and add $115,000 to this, if somebody owes 138 grand on the property and it just sold for $208,000 on 120% loan to value, guess what? You're still all into this property. 138,000 divided by 208,000 is 66 cents on the dollar. So you're still only into this property for 70% of the value, but it's because the auditor doesn't value it correctly. It's usually significantly undervalued. So don't miss out on a huge amount of deals uh, by you know taking this too, too short because 50% loan to value might really be like 20% loan to value because the property is significantly worth more than what the auditor has it valued at. So I know that was a lot, but hopefully that makes sense. You don't wanna cut yourself out of deals. You know, Consider taking this up to 100% uh, because you'll get more deals, more, more opportunities that most people probably aren't marketing to because they're stopping at 70 or 80%. So there's still that 30% that you can still get the, that opportunity from. So that's two of the lists that I wanted to talk about. The non-owner occupied high equity and the owner occupied high equity. So uh, instead of just doing uh, non-owner occupied, which is 19, 1900, you can do any, which is 7,840, or you can do owner occupied, which is 5932. So that's two of them. The other good list that you can pull from PropStream is vacants. So that means in this zip code, they see that 244 properties are potentially vacant. Doesn't mean that they're actually vacant. These are all just relative terms, right? Potentially vacant according to their data. So you can go out there and you can market to these 244 properties. If they're vacant, the seller may want to sell the property because it's not producing income. It's an expense to them. So vacants is another great list that you can market to. Um, and with PropStream, you can get 5,000 records per month, right? So you can come in here, you can save these, uh, add to a list. So you can save 5,000 records per month, uh, create a new one, you know, 5, 13, 22, or, you know, 4, 3, 2, 3, 2, whatever it is, whatever you're saving. And then you can save these, and then you can take this information. So you can go into my properties here, and then you have this list of 244 people that you can export, 
and then take it to get skip traced and then market to these people as well. And prop streaming here too has skip tracing um, and campaigns. So you can do some of that in here. Um, or if you want to use a third party service, um, you can export it out um, and do it in there as well. But it does give you 5,000 records uh, for free every single month that you're uh, using their platform. And then the last list that I want to talk about, the fourth list, and this is probably one of the most profitable lists that you can use. It's really honestly where I made a lot of my money, well over a million dollars. Uh, was from driving for dollars. The problem with driving for dollars is it's very manual, you know, labor, hourly intensive, because you have to physically go out there and drive for houses and knock on people's doors and cold call people. So it takes a lot of your time because it's very, very targeted. But if you can find a neighborhood that, that's around wherever you're at, that potent, you know, might be transitioning, might have some boarded up houses and might have some really nice houses in the same neighborhood. And if you can go through and you can drive for dollars and cold call, any house that's boarded up, that has long grass, that has roof that's peeling, that has a gutter hanging off of it, anything that would show deferred maintenance, potential motivation for them wanting to sell, you write down that address and then you give them a call and ask them if they have any interest in selling. So driving for dollars is massive, huge opportunity. Don't downplay it because I've literally made millions and millions of dollars off of it. So if you wanna see step-by-step -step how to do driving for dollars and how to start getting that first deal as well, if you check out this video up here, um, it'll give you some more information on that too. So these are the four lists that you can use to find motivated sellers, non-owner occupied high equity, owner occupied high equity, vacants, and driving for dollars. So get started right now today. There's no time like the present. You'll never get that deal if you don't get started today. And remember, the most important part about real estate is finding amazing deals. So rewatch this video, pull a list, get marketing today. So if this was valuable to you, if you can smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate that. If you wanna get started on your free seven day trial with PropStream so you can start pulling data just like this, click the link in the description below, hit that subscribe and notification bell so you can get all this content going forward. As always, appreciate you being here. We'll see you on the next one.